Today we're gonna be talking all about the Trident. This seems like uh, such old hat now, okay? We've, we've had the update aquatic videos. Trident old news. Well, there is some really, really cool tips and tricks when it comes to the Trident, so I'm gonna give them all of you right now. So here we are inside of Minecraft, and let's say you're someone like me that really wants a Trident, but doesn't have one yet in a normal survival world. Well, where are you gonna go? Obviously into either riverbeds or into oceans to look for drowned to naturally spawn. Now, a drown does not need to be holding the trident in order for you to get a trident from them. Uh, so you can just kill any drown and there's a, still a chance that the trident will drop. I would definitely suggest having one of these guys, a conduit. I have a whole video about how the conduit works and everything uh, about it. Uh, if you're gonna be doing this because it helps that you don't have to breathe underwater uh, whenever you are looking for these drown. Oh my gosh. Here we go, our first drowned. Uh, so here is how it works in terms of a uh, percentage chance that you will get a uh, trident whenever killing a drown. There is a generic 11% chance that whenever you kill a drowned, you will get a trident. Uh, I do not have any looting on my sword. This is just a sword actually from the end because I died in the end and I lost all my stuff. You can see that my armor and stuff is not all that great. Uh, so uh, currently every drowned that I kill, there's an 11% chance, which is about one in 10 chance that I will get a trident from a uh, dead drowned. Now that goes up two percentage points for every level of looting and looting three is the maximum level. So 11 will go to 13% chance if you have looting one, then to 15% chance with looting two, and then 17% chance with looting three. Now if a drown is carrying a trident, then they have an 8.5% chance of dropping that trident. Now, that may seem backwards. Why is it if I'm killing this drowned, he has an 11% chance of dropping a trident, but one who's actually carrying one in his hand is 8.5%. Like, that isn't, it's less. 8.5 versus 11? Well, I should kill non, I should kill drown not carrying tridents. Well, that is because you still have the 11% for killing the drowned, on top of that, the 8.5% is to drop the trident that he's currently carrying. And that will go up with one percentage point for every level of looting. So to 9.5, and 11.5%, and uh, depending on uh, which level of looting you have. Now, I never, uh, during this recording session, I have not come across a zombie with a trident but if you do make sure that you have your trusty shield on you because holy moly they will attack very fast and it does an awful lot of damage they will attack once every one and a half seconds dealing nine hearts of damage on normal which is a heck of a lot of hearts when you only have, or uh, I guess it's nine uh, damage points. Uh, that's a whole lot considering you only have uh, 20 damage points in total. Uh, so you can really only get hit three times and really two times is gonna get you way low. If a villager is killed by a trident and your difficulty is set to easy, which it is, difficulty is set to easy, then they will die 100% of the time, uh, which we just kind of saw there, but hey, just take my word on it. If difficulty is set to normal, there is a 50% chance that they will die, uh, and then there's a 50% chance that they will become a uh, villager, a zombie villager, uh, just like this. A villager is already a villager. But if difficulty is set to hard, then there is a 100% chance that when these guys die to Trident, that they will become a zombie villager, which is super duper interesting that that like you would think that they would just die like you just got impaled by a trident but apparently not you're you're now you've now become zombified 
In Java Edition, a Trident, which you can see right here, actually does a full heart of damage more than an unenchanted diamond sword. Uh, and that is just melee damage. Now, an area that the uh, Trident kind of falls flat on is enchanting. Uh, when it comes to enchanting a trident, you really only have a few enchantments. Uh, loyalty being uh, how quickly it will return to you. If you don't have a loyalty, you have to walk over and pick it up. Uh, channeling, which will uh, cause a lightning strike if it is uh, in the middle of a thunderstorm. Riptide, which I'm going to show off in just a moment, which makes you kind of like fly through the water in a really cool effect. Impaling which will increase your melee and and range damage uh, if you are in, uh, fighting a uh, an underwater creature. So it's a little bit upsetting that impaling only really works on uh, aquatic mobs, and that doesn't include drowned. So it's basically it's only for guardians. Like guardians is like the only thing. Uh, if you want to kill a lot of fish, cool. You can get some impaling, but really it's not all that useful. On bedrock edition, that does change. Uh, it's not just the aquatic mobs. It's any mob as long as it is during rain. And so that means that the trident can, uh, with all those enchantments in mind, that means that the trident cannot get sharpness. It means that it, it cannot get um, really anything else other than that impaling to increase its attack damage. So if you happen to be in a situation where it's between a diamond sword and trident, unenchanted, yes, the trident is what you would use. Uh, but in the long run, you'll be able to enchant your diamond sword up to be a lot more useful. So let's take a look at Riptide. It can be uh, all the way up to three. That is the max uh, that you can enchant it. So if you have this trident and you get in water and you hold back the trident and then throw it, woo! you won't actually throw the trident. You'll go to where the trident basically would have gone uh, if you were throwing it. If you're not in F5, you kind of get this really interesting animation here. So if I here, let me hang out here, hold it. There we go. And then bam, woo! You get, uh, you can kind of like see the trident. Bam! Wha bam! Wha bam! Go in front of you like, it's like a massive fork, really. Like, ooh, I'm gonna fork that thing. Now, this is an effective way to move inside of water, which is kind of nice, but it can also shoot you out of water. So we can watch this happen. Woohoo! And this is an amazing effect whenever you pair it with the elytra. Uh, you can use this instead of firework rockets. Let's go ahead and throw that. Oh, why did I put it in my offhand? Anyway, okay, there we go. So now we're uh, carrying elytra. We do it, we throw it, and then I can activate the elytra. And your elytra will still be activated if you have it activated when you enter the water. So here, I can basically dive into the water here. with Splish, splash taking a water bath, then activate Riptide, and when I come out of the water, I am being propelled uh, with the Riptide effect and the Elytra are already activated, which is super duper awesome. So you can kind of do these really cool boosts that take no rockets at all. It's super duper efficient, and as you can see, you go really, really far. But even if you're going over land and you can just Bare, barely, barely hit some water. Uh oh, oh, I'm, I wasn't. Oh, there we go. Uh, we can, we can use it. So as long as there's any water anywhere, uh, you can use it just fine because you don't actually have to be in uh, uh, all the water all the way. You just need to get your feet wet, really, and then you can travel over great distances. Now, one thing to note is that the durability of the trident will be used even if you don't hit anything with the riptide effect. So uh, this is a completely fresh trident. I used it once on the riptide and it did take the durability down. 
If you can see, uh, 249 is the current durability. Once we use it, whooshoo, fly up into the air, then we're down to 248. Now a trident has the exact same durability as an iron sword. So you can keep that in mind whenever you're using a trident that you'll get the same amount of uses as you do with an iron sword that you do with a trident. Another quick thing to note is that the riptide effect could be used really nicely in the end uh, where you may want to do a lot of searching for extra elytra and don't want to use up tons and tons of rockets. All you would need is two water buckets uh, then you can create a water source block really anywhere uh, and then pick up, you know, fill up your two water buckets and then move on to the next island. Uh, you just want to, you, you would still want a few rockets on you, although gunpowder is hard to find. So these are just be backup rockets uh, because if you start get, dipping too far below the, uh, the islands, well, then you're just out of luck. So there's another little tip for you. Hope you enjoyed this episode of OMG Craft. If you did, please give this video a big old like. Make sure you subscribe for future videos, tips, tricks, tutorials, and spotlights here on OMG Craft. We'll see you next time on OMG Craft. Bye.